Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to a brand new channel on NRL Supercoach called A Man Talks NRL Supercoach. Now, in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking you through every team that I think has got the best start to the NRL season in 2021. So hopefully give you guys a bit of insight into the teams that I think will have a really good start to the year, which hopefully you can put into your initial squads. I really hope that you guys enjoy it and that you take some value um, out, of the, uh, out of the video. So let's get into it. So starting off, these are the first three teams I think have the best start to the NRL season. Um, that's the Cowboys, the Eels, and the Knights. So starting with the Cowboys, they've got a pretty tough game to start with away to the Panthers. But after that, they've got a really nice five-game stretch where the, probably the most difficult opponent they're going to face is the Titans. I think, you know, Dragons, Sharks, Tigers, and Bulldogs, all pretty winnable, I think, for the Cowboys. The Sharks is actually at a neutral venue as well, so that kind of removes that disadvantage of being an away venue. So I think, you know, those first six games, they've probably only got really one tough game against the Panthers. So I think players like Val Holmes, you know, who's probably looking to be the starting fullback and have goal-kicking duties as well, I think he'd be a good option to have in your center wing spot. Um, he's also got fullback center uh, flexibility, which, which can come in handy. Um, getting dual position players um, just gives your squad a little bit more flexibility. Um, obviously, Tamalolo is just a proven, you know, super coach gun. I think there's, you'll doesn't matter really what the opponents are I think he'll always do well but I think obviously he's going to be a good option as well if they've got some easy games you can expect him to be churning out a lot of you know a lot of meters uh, as he always does uh, so yeah I think he's always going to be a good option uh, moving on to the Eels now I think they've got two tough games in that six game stretch against the Storm and the Raiders at least with the Storm they're playing him at home so that gives you no know, some advantage because they typically do well at Bankwest but those other four games I could expect them to win you know all of those you know starting with the Broncos is you know an ideal matchup for them you know Sharks are going to be without Sean Johnson so I think that's pretty winnable Tigers you know it's hard to call those games with the Eels Tigers given that there's that Western rivalry but I think you'd on paper you'd expect the Eels squad to be stronger than the Tigers so you'd expect them to be potentially getting a win there and the Dragons like we just don't really know I guess given all their off-season stuff with, you know, getting a new coach in, this Cam McInnes, you know, officially leaving at the end of this season as well. So we just don't really know how they're going to perform as well, and they're pretty inconsistent side as it is. So I think with the Eels, you know, there's not that doesn't really change too much in terms of the players I think that you want to be getting. I think you'd be looking at guys like Junior Paulo in your front row, you know, potentially with those easy games, you could expect them to be offloading more, potentially contributing to tries and you know in the attack in general so potentially there could be some extra points for him there um ryan madison i think will just do well against any opponent but you know with an easy run um in that first six you can potentially expect him to be getting you know line breaks and tries as well which could even he's already got a pretty high floor with his base stats but there's a good potential to get attacking points there as well so i think he could be a really good option and mitchell moses is a little bit a little bit of a punt i guess because i think everyone in the halves would be looking at, mainly at nathan cleary um and I think Mitchell Moses at 480k, you know, if you want to take a bit of a pod, you know, point of difference option with that attacking, you know, potential in those easier games, I think he could be a nice difference to have at the start of the season. Uh, moving on to the Knights, I think Knights far and away have the best start of the season of any team. Um, you know, they're not versing any opponent who were in the top six of last season, firstly. So, yeah, starting with the Bulldogs at home, I think that is a, you know, it's a great matchup for them. I mean, they did lose against the Bulldogs at home last year. I do remember that game when it was a, I think it was like a downpour, um, and they did not look good at all. And I guess one thing to note with the uh, Knights is obviously they're not going to be with Ponga, who's you know, far and away their best player, the most attacking player as well. So potentially we might not see them perform as strongly as we'd expect looking at those games. But, you know, I think it's worth the gamble just looking at those games against the Bulldogs, Tigers, Dragons, Sharks, even the Warriors who can be inconsistent as well, you know, I could see the Knights winning maybe four, five of those six. The Titans could be the only maybe tough game that we could see in that. So I think, yeah, you're looking for mid-range options such as Jaden Braley, who might be in the uh, hooking role. Uh, Connor Watson, I think, has been very popular. I've seen in early drafts as well of other people's teams, given I think his price, and I think he's got 5'8 and hooker flexibility, which is always, you know, always comes in handy um, with your squad. Um, I've got the two props as well, Dance Feedy and Clemmer. I mean... I don't know if I would go there myself, but I think they had really good starts to the season last year. Clement did fall off a little bit. 
I guess it depends on their minutes as well. Also with Tyson Frizzell coming into that, um, you know, in coming into the forwards, potentially these two might have their minutes reduced as well. Um, but I think in these kind of games, you know, they might luck into a try, but, you know, it's pretty rare to expect props to be getting tries. So I think you have to be relying on their base stats, which I think they can still manage, you know, in these easier games. Um, and I've got Tex Hoy there as well at 240k. Now he probably, I'm not 100% sure, but I think he could be the replacement for Ponga for the start of the season as well. So if you think that the Knights are going to do well, then at starting fullback, you'd expect him to be getting amongst the attacking points as well. And with those easy games, I think he could be a good option to start the season to, you know, he should make some cash hopefully and then you can offload him after that once Ponga comes back, you know, either downgrade him to a cheapie to make some money or, you know, maybe make an upgrade to a more, um, you know, more reliable um, fullback or 5-8 option. So the next three teams that I wanted to touch on um, uh, were the Panthers, the Rabbitohs and the Titans. So I think Panthers have a pretty good start to the season um, aside from their matchups against the Storm and the Raiders. Now I think the Panthers will still be a good team. I think I would expect after the disappointment how they ended the season last year they'd want to be coming back um, and performing really well I think and you know they they would take that experience and that should benefit them in the long run and you know with games against Cowboys, Bulldogs and Broncos I would expect them to maybe go off start off the season with a bang and you know if you're looking at the attacking players I think obviously Nathan Cleary is going to be the standout option Uh, based on those games to start the season he's in my opinion the best option to have at halfback. Um, obviously Charlie Staines I think is really popular as well given what we saw in those two games last year when he scored I think like six tries something crazy crazy. Um, and he should be replacing um, Mansell's wing position as well so he should be starting so he should be a good cash cow option um, you know I've put in there as well Panthers center wing I think it's you can go for any like Brian Toto you know Stephen Crichton given those easy games to start the season you know you could expect them to be getting some points um, and if you're looking at the forwards I feel like Coruscant has been a little bit under the radar. I think obviously last year he was really popular given that he started pretty cheap. He has obviously gone, he's been priced up to about 590k based on his average from last year. But I think majority of teams that I've seen have started with, you know, McInnes or Grant or Damian Cook. So if you're looking for a bit of a, maybe a pod option at hooker, I think Coruscant could be a decent shout, especially with those easy games. He could get amongst the attacking points. Um, And I've got James Fisher-Harris in there, not really because of the, you know, easy games, because I wouldn't expect him to be getting attacking points, but more for the fact that um, with Tamel leaving, I would expect him to maybe potentially getting more minutes, um, and he's got a really good PPM, um, really good base stats, so I think he could be a good option if you're looking for a um, front row option. Uh, to the Rabbitohs now, so they've also again got two tough games against the Storm and the Roosters, but in between those two, they've got Manly, which could be a decent game. The way I see it with the Rabbitohs, though, and their start, I'm really looking at that round four, five, and six matchup against Bulldogs, Broncos, and Tigers. Like, I think the Rabbitohs could win all three of those pretty comfortably as well. So, for me, Rabbitohs, obviously, the players that you want to be looking at, Damian Cook, Cody Walker, Latrell, um, you know, potentially Cam Murray, although I probably won't go there myself. Um, but I think with the Rabbitohs, like, obviously, Cody Walker had a ridiculous end to the season last year, but I think it was a lot of it was based on he had the license to be able to roam from both sides of the field and just contribute to tries on not just left but also on the right side as well and I think that really helped him get all those try assists line break assists so I think you can use that start of the season with those three tough tougher games to kind of assess how they're performing and I think that could be a good opportunity if you know if you like what you see and he's got that license to roam I think jumping on at round four could be a really really good shout because you could expect him to do well against the Broncos and Bulldogs and Tigers Um, Cook, I think, is going to be a little bit more of a consistent option as well, given that, you know, his points are mainly coming from base stats. But, you know, again, you could do the same approach as well. If they um, don't seem to be doing too well in the first three, you might not want to consider him. But then you can look at the upside of those um, round four to six fixtures for the uh, Rabbitohs. Um, Now, moving on to the Titans. Now, the Titans are a really, really interesting side, um, given all the, you know, the acquisitions they've made with Tino and David Fafida. Um, you know, I think that could be a really, really interesting team. And potentially, there's rumors of, you know, Cam Smith even joining them for a short-term period. Which, like, if Smith joined the Titans, I think I would 100% want to be jumping on their players because he would obviously make that whole team um, a lot stronger. And they've got a really good start to the season as well. There's only really one tough game, which is against the Raiders. But I think, aside from that, I could see them winning four, five of those games potentially against the Warriors, Broncos, Cowboys, Knights, and Sea Eagles. 
Um, so I think, you know, those are all very winnable games for the Titans. So I think, you know, obviously Tino is really, really popular this year, given that he's not too expensive, I think. And he obviously had a really great end to the season last year. I think part of that was also help that he could just run off Cam Smith's, you know, primarily delivered balls and he could just crash over for a try. But, you know, again, if Smith is potentially going to the Titans, I think Tino then becomes a great option. Um, guys like Fafita as well, they do have that potential to be getting tries as well and a lot of attacking points. So I think with those easy games, he could be a good consideration as well in your starting second row. Um, and I've got two uh, backs in my recommendations as well with Brian Kelly and Brimson. Now Brimson, I had I jumped on him at the end of the last season and he was just amazing for me. He had such a good end to the season. I was considering, at first I bought him just to purely make some cash and then offload him. But just the way he performed, I couldn't get rid of him. He has to be in my side. Um, he was an absolute legend for me. He is priced pretty expensive at 650k. Like, that's above the likes of Turbo. So I think he's actually going to be an option, I think, which is going to go a bit under the radar, given that I think a lot of people will be going for, like, Tedesco, Pappenhaus, and um, and Turbo. So he could be a good point of difference as well. Um, and given those easy games to start the season, I think he actually could do really well. So he's someone I would recommend. Brian Kelly as well. He had a good season last year. At 500k, it's, it's tough to fit him into your centers because usually centers you want to be starting the season with some more cheap options that you're going to try to upgrade. But I think, you know, still not a bad choice if you want to go there. So guys, those are the six teams who I think have the best start to the season. I'm going to move on to four more teams who I think have an okay start to the season. A bit of like the best of the rest. I'm going to start off with the Dragons though. So they've got... It's not actually too bad of a schedule, but I think just with the Dragons, you just don't know what you're going to get. They're super inconsistent. They can turn it on at any time, but then they can also just drop off mid-game and just let teams back in. So, you know, starting with the Sharks, potentially is a winnable game. Cowboys, Eagles, again, good fixtures as well, although the Cowboys is away, um, and I would maybe bank on the Cowboys potentially winning at home. And then those next set of three get a bit tougher with the Knights, Eels, and the Warriors. Like, it's hard to call what they're going to do in those. I think... To me, it doesn't really change the kind of players that I'd want to be getting from the Dragons, which is, to be honest, not many. I think Cam McInnes is an obvious choice because he just doesn't he doesn't really care what the opponent is. He will just tackle his ass off all the time anyway. You know, so he's going to rack up base stats, um, you know, at will. There is a question, though, of obviously, now that he's, you know, confirmed to be going to the Sharks from 2022, if that means there's going to be an impact potentially on his minutes and the rotation, you know, if the coach wants to kind of phase him out of the squad because he knows that he's just not going to be there long term that's something to maybe look out for and could put people off um it did put me off a little bit as well hearing that because i think he obviously is you'd expect him usually to be playing like 75 80 minutes a game but you know if there is that potential risk of him being rotated out something to consider because then i would definitely look at the other cheaper um second row and hooker options um i've got in poasa farmasuli there as well so i think he's expected to be either in the 17 or potentially starting in the um, forwards so I think he's you know he might be a good cheapy option I think for forwards it usually doesn't really matter as much in terms of what the opponent is because you just expect them to be churning through base stats as opposed to having attacking points so I think regardless of those early um, early games I think he could be a good option now I've got Zach Lomax there at 605k I think personally he's not going to be one I'm going to go for but I do know he's going to be a popular option based on what he did last year I would maybe I just put him there because I know that he's going to be really popular as well, and he can with the goal kicking. Um, he had good base stats. He could actually do pretty well, um, but with slightly tougher games, it's hard to say how he's going to do. And you know, at 600k, I think what I would probably do is personally is wait and see how the dragons perform. Uh, he might drop in price at the start of the season. I might pick him up later at a cheaper price if that's what I can do. Moving on to the Raiders, so I think the Raiders pretty decent start in the first four games but then it gets tough from rounds five and six where they got the Panthers and the Eels back to back so I think Raiders options could be good to start the season I wouldn't personally then just say trade them out as soon as it gets to round five but something to keep in the back of your mind if you're looking at any of their attacking players it might not do as well in rounds five and six but I guess it's also a caveat of the fact that the Raiders are a good side of themselves so they have the potential to score against anyone um, in terms of the players to consider, obviously Papali, I think, is someone who's always a really good super coach option. He's usually got good potential to be getting tries and attacking points as well. So I think with those four, first four games, he could be a like he could actually be a really good option as well, given that he's got that potential for tries. I've got Corey, Harry, and Iron there as well. It just depends, I think, on who 
is going to be filling in that spot that John Bateman's leaving in the second row. So again, I think it's one of those things where we just kind of have to wait and see what the round one team shit is going to be. If, you know, for example, if he's starting, I think at 300k, he'll be a good mid, mid-range mid um, option that you can put into your second row, either on your bench or your third second row spot. Uh, I've got Jack White in there as well, given that he had a really, really good end of the season last year. I had him to start the season as well, but he just really, he was really inconsistent for me, but Towards the end of the season, he was obviously scoring a lot of tries. He was running the ball a lot more. So I think if we see him, you know, perform like that again, I think he could be a good consideration, given that the first four games are not too bad. Um, and then I've got Bailey Simpson and Matthew Tomoko in there as well. That's purely just based on their potential cash cow op- that their potential cash cow options. Um, so obviously with Kotrick going to the uh, Bulldogs, you know, there's going to be a wing spot that's going to be left open for the Raiders. Um, and obviously Croker, I think, has I think he's expected to miss the first few games of the season as well. So there is a starting center role potentially available in the Raiders. But I think that, that's something to keep an eye on because apparently he's actually progressing quite... Uh, Croker is progressing quite well with his injury. So he might actually be back for the start of the season in that case. Makes these two options not as, you know, not as good. But, you know, at that kind of price, it's not going to be eating a bit too much of your budget. Now moving on to the Roosters, I think... A bit of a mixed bag here again as well. They've got two tough games against the Rabbitohs and the Storm. Like, God, Rabbitohs, who knows what they're going to do? You know, they got absolutely pummeled by them at the end of the season. They might want to be looking for revenge or they might get pummeled again. We just don't know. It depends on how the Rabbitohs are performing as well. But two good games to start with, Sea Eagles and Tigers. So I think they could do really well there. Um, obviously, Tedesco, I don't think, needs to really be talked about too much for Supercoach. I think, personally, I think at 840k... I'll pay that much to have him in the side of my team um, because I think just watching Roosters games and not owning Tedesco is just too much stress and I think I just want to have just have him because he's just so integral to how the Roosters attack and he's just involved in everything and he's, he was an absolute monster last year and that really defined my season last year as well when I brought him in I think it was round three when he scored that 199 pointer against the Bulldogs like didn't captain him unfortunately but at least I had him. Um, and ever since then, I think I've just been enraptured with the guy. He has to be in my squad. Uh, potentially Takeaho as well in the front row. I'm not sure what the goal-kicking responsibilities are going to be now that Flanagan is gone. Um, Takeaho can goal-kick, and if he does, obviously a, a front row that goal-kicks is a dream for Super Coach. So I think he could be a good option as well. And again, his points would be more based on kind of base stats, potentially with attacking with that goal-kicking threat. I think Crichton as well, uh, Angus Crichton at 670k is a really, really good second row option. I think especially now that the Roosters are looking to kind of have Cordner miss, I think, the first 12 rounds given his concussion history. So obviously that just means increased workload for the second rowers like Crichton. You know, he's good for, he's really good for base stats. He's got some attacking threat as well. So he could do well in those kind of four slightly easier games um, against Manly Tigers, Warriors and the Sharks. And I've got Sam Walker there as well. Like, I think that's, that's it really depends on who's going to replace Flanagan at half. It could be Lachlan Lamb. It could be Sam Walker. We just don't know yet. You know, if he gets a starting gig at basement price of 173k, I think there's no reason to not have him in your side because he will be a good cash cow option then. Uh, and finally, we've got the Warriors. So the Warriors, again, a bit of a mixed bag. Titans and Knights, kind of hard to predict how they're going to perform. But the Raiders and Roosters, both two tough teams. It then does improve from 5-6 to six with the Manly um, Sea Eagles and the Dragons. So I think with Warriors, m- I'd mainly be looking at their forwards anyway. So I think the quality of the opponent is less important. Um, so to people like Jazz Tavanga, Tohu Harris, potentially Ben B- Murdoch Masilla, you know, those guys in the forwards, I think, are mainly going to be relying on base stats. Like, Tavanga is just so good for PPM. Like, he's just an absolute beast. You just, I swear, every time he runs the ball, he just wants to pop out a little offload. And every time you're watching, you're like, oh, great, that's just more super, co- uh, super coach points for me. Um, Tohu Harris had a really strong year as well. So I think, you know, I, I wouldn't really pay as much attention to the opponents for these forward guys. I think it's whether you're not it's whether or not you think they're going to get the minutes um, to justify their price. Because um, especially someone like Tavanga, his PPM is so good, but it really depends on his minutes. If he's getting like 55, 60 minutes, I think he's a must-have in your team because he's a lot cheaper than some of the other hooker and second-row options as well. 
Um, and in terms of the attacking players at the Warriors, you know, Chanel harris Tavita, I think I've seen in a lot of um, initial draft teams as well at 426k. is a bit of a mid-range, you know, half option that you could potentially reserve. Um, and David Fusatua, who's going to be on the wing for the Warriors, again, at 250k is a pretty cheap option. So I think if you feel like the Warriors are going to have a good start to the year, um, I think they're pretty valid options. And I think, you know, especially someone like Fusatua, 250k, it's not too expensive. So I think there's no real harm having him in your team. But yeah, the Warriors start is a bit of a mixed bag. Personally, I think I'll have a bit of a wait and see approach with them before I maybe jump on their players. Alright guys, well that's it. We've gone through all the teams I think have got the best and okay start to the season. Uh, hopefully you guys found some use out of that, you know, give you some food for thought in terms of the kind of players that you might want to have in your initial squad. Uh, as well as some of the teams that you might want to be targeting. So hopefully if you guys found use out of that, uh, thumbs up on the video would be really good. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.